The Willie Asher, how you doing today, brother? <clears throat> I'm excellent, man. How you doing, brother? Oh man, I am just I'm just great over here, my friend. Okay. Had a, had a interesting topic I wanted to uh, ask you, man. I should say, interesting question. Um, you know, we put out the video about Dayton, yeah. And normally, throughout culture, throughout history, well, one dating wasn't a thing throughout history, but now that it is, it usually was that time pre-marriage you get to know somebody and then you marry that person or i was to say you get to know somebody in order to be able to spend the rest of your life with that person but we're in 2021 that's no longer the case yeah so the question becomes why are and i'm gonna just stick to america why are americans no longer choosing to marry and that's an interesting topic especially since you realize 50 years ago which isn't that long ago marriage rates were way higher than they are today yeah and when i talk about america i'm talking about all the ethnicities from black white hispanic asian whatever what have you i just want to read off some of these stats because i was reading this article and i thought it was really really interesting and it says that marriage has declined across all races and ethnicities except for asian americans that's a really interesting point but look, check, check this out. It says that between five to about 9% of marriages since about 1956 have been on the decline. So it's saying about, we're in 2000, this article is in 2019, going back to 1956, where men and women were around, I would say 20, 21, 22. At the oldest, they were getting married. Now it's like 30, early 30s where they're waiting to be able to get married. And unfortunately, this, this article talks about, so I'll say 43, 43% of black men had never been married. This was in 1990. Now it's 51% of black men in 2019. Almost the same for black women. Now it's about 47% of black women. His, Hispanic women increased from 27% to 37%. Men increased from 37% to 45%. And of course you got your widows and all that stuff as well. But you know what's crazy, bro? And you know, we the, we the Black Culture Podcast. What group do you think is suffering the most from this phenomenon as far as race? African-Americans. Black people, Black, yeah. black Americans are suffering the most. We have the highest rate of being single of any other ethnicity in this country. And so you being a married man, I think it's only right that I ask you this question. Why do you think that we in our culture, 2021 and going forward are choosing not to marry? So first let's, cause you brought up earlier, like, um, you know, marriage, like we talk about the American dream, like black people got married, you know? They started families. You had the, the you know what I'm saying, the tip, like the, when you think of a black family, the hardworking, hard hat, hard steel toe boots, dad, stay at home mom that took care of the babies. You thought of that, that was our culture. You know what I'm saying? That's something we did. Even way back in, in, in the early stages of life, that's what we did. So, and slowly but surely, you know, it was trending at once. Then it stopped. And then I kind of feel like now it's kind of training back up, but it's kind of like at a standstill. And I think that's because of, to me, a lot of this points back to social media. You know, everyone and, and everyone wants to be this quote unquote independent person, you know, for, for the women, it's the independent chick. Um, go out here, do this on my own, do this. I don't need a man to do this, that, and third. And then for the brothers is how many bodies can you catch you know uh how many shorties you got it's like marriage has turned into like this corny thing it's not popular like there's a thing like if you get married <laughs> at a certain age it's like man what are you doing go live your life and me i think it's <clears throat> it's preference some people are ready to get married at a younger age some people need to go out and explore but I think more people <clears throat> are trying to be along the, hey, and I do respect it. But a lot of people are along the, 
let me go live my life first and then I'll settle down and get married. I think that's I think that's really what it is nowadays, because look, at if you look around on social media, a lot of women are traveling. Um, a lot of guys are out traveling, partying. So a lot of people now, I think you're in a generation to where a lot of people want to go live their life. They want to go experience new things. Um, what's the, we just interviewed, uh, C. Nicole, what was the thing we talked about? Uh, vacation, you know, now vacation is more of the thing instead of getting married. So I, I think to me, I think most of it nowadays in 2021 is because of everyone's, you know what, let me go out here and party and do this. And then I'll settle down when I'm old and, or when I'm done. So I think that's more. So what it is, I don't think it's, now, don't get me wrong. It is a lot of divorce, but I think instead of divorce, it's more so, you know, people nowadays just they're not rushing to get married. You know, they want to travel. Unless you have a partner or a spouse that wants to travel, you're really not going to get married. And, um, you know, times change as you get older. It was kind of like the thing when you were younger. Hey. Graduate, find your spouse and get married and y'all live life together. Now, today is graduate get your education go travel the world go learn the world go learn about yourself which oftentimes may be the right thing that may cut down the divorce rate because you may get fine a person that's getting married wasn't really to get married and all of a sudden dang you know what I, and that's one thing i don't think people really understand like you know when you married it ain't just like you could just walk away like, like no nah, i'm good i'm going this way so i think more so it's more of you know we're in a we're in 2021 a lot of people being i don't know if i can use that word a lot of people out here nowadays and a lot of people just traveling and uh spreading their royal oats mm. you brought up a, a lot of good points and one i really want to delve into and basically the whole takeaway that i got from you is more people are about themselves mm -hmm. versus Bingo. having to share their life with someone else but you brought up something you said it'll probably reduce divorce versus somebody not being ready to get married here's a question that i have for you as a married man why is there training for pretty much any field you want to get into right? Whether you want to get into technology, science, banking, engineering, medical, you want to learn how to become a sports agent, you want to learn how to become an actor, you want to learn how to become literally a politician. There's training for all these different things. But for something that I have to spend the rest of my life doing, or at least take a vow, and spend my time being responsible for another human there's training for parenting right there's training for learning how to take care of a baby there's training for the different phases of life as a parent but there is no training pre-marriage to help you get ready for that journey i guess you would say that you're about to embark on now everybody is unique in their own different way but marriage in itself the actual institution of it is very much like a business there's training for you if you want to run your own business if you want to start if you want to do the marketing learn how to hire people grow your business and all of that but there is no training for the union of marriage why do you think that is so two things um first thing is there is training there it's just not called training it's called marriage counseling now when done right marriage counseling does help when done right marriage counseling does you know it works marriage counseling the purpose of marriage counseling is to <clears throat> learn about each other and no, hold on wait i i've got to interrupt you just because i will i want it to be a little bit more specific okay okay so marriage counseling that's after you're engaged right some people do that. Some people actually do it while they're dating too. I, me personally, I think you should do it while you're dating too. Okay. Well, okay. So before you can become a doctor engineer, before you get that degree, you have to go through training. Right. And here, here's the point that I'm, that I'm, I'm trying to drive home. 
just to work on you as a person and your understanding of another human being. Let's say for the sake of this argument, it is the opposite sex because nowadays you can get married to the same same sex, right? The type of training that you would go through and those different programs that I just named are for years. Marriage counseling is what, six weeks? It, it all, again, it all depends on a couple. Some people may just go through that six weeks just because most preachers won't marry people until they've counseled them. So some people may just go through the motions, but. No, I'm, I'm just saying for the length of time. Of yeah, about six weeks. Session. Six weeks. Okay. All right. All right. But All right. no amount of training can get you prepared for marriage because you can date for years. Once you say I do and you marry that person, you completely start over. You have to learn that person. You have to learn. It's different from even if it's your, your girlfriend, you sleeping with them and this, that, and the third. I'm telling you, man, like <clears throat> you can go through all the training you want in the world. Once you get married, things change because now you have to reprocess yourself. You have to learn that person all over again. You have to learn how to talk to that person. You have to learn how that person wants to be loved. Vice versa. That person has to learn how to love you. You have to show that person how they can how, how to care for you so for me like like i said you can go through all the counseling in the world once you get married it's still it's like because think about it now right the person you are and people change throughout the years right you're not gonna be the same person you are right now a couple years from now or a few months from now so again you have to continue to be like i've been married to my wife for eight years i'm still learning new things about her because people change over time so you can go it can be training but what you might have to go back to train because again, we people change over time. People learn different things about themselves. You learn different things about yourself, your spouse. And so, and so, like exactly what you're saying is the training, right? So, yeah. the, main, the main reason why I brought that up is because there but are. But I don't think it, you can train someone to learn about somebody. You may can treat train. Oh, you can absolutely the tools can. of right. how to communicate, but. Right. The tools so, I'm showing so, okay, you how so, to communicate with that person may not work with the other person. All right. So let me throw this at you. We love football, right? Yeah. The amount of training you go through before each game, or I'll even say before you get into the NFL, then you say, there's no amount of training that's going to get you ready to be in the NFL because once you get into the NFL, it's a completely different culture, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Then you get into the NFL. But everything you did before you got drafted or before you got signed got you ready to get there. And what I'm saying is, because of the point that you brought home, you have a lot of people who are not even ready to even get there. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, why isn't there some type of training? See, counseling is counseling. Training is a completely different thing because I can train to be a doctor. Once I, once I become a doctor, there is continuing education, but I was trained well enough even to get there. You have a lot of people who aren't trained well enough even to get there. That's why when they do, they fail. Well, let's get to it. And the training starts from the parent. That's really where the training for coming in, right? My job right now, what if you don't have parents that are married? Then you have to learn as you go. And, like, and so and so that's that's what I'm saying. There, there. OK, so one subject and you you always talk about trades being taught inside of schools. Right. One thing that I always talk about is human relations, because one thing that we do not have in this culture is the training or the where the wherewithal to actually think outside of ourselves. Now, granted. First law of nature, self-preservation, but self-preservation and selfishness, which America is a very selfish culture, mm -hmm. right? Which is why I think we have one of the highest divorce rates because of selfishness. The training that I'm talking about is literally just having the care and the compassion for another person, which most of us like. Most of us go into marriage, and correct me if I'm wrong, I see a lot of people going into a marriage still with that single person mentality still with that selfishness mentality, still with that dating mentality, still with that you're optional, it's all about me mentality. Look, most guys would 
hopefully admit that when they're pursuing a girl nine times out of 10, they're not thinking about what that woman wants. They're thinking about what they want, how they can either sleep, sleep with her, have this, have this eye, eye candy on their arms, all these different things. And women doing the same thing. What can this man do for me? Can he, can he pay my bills? Can he take care of me? What I'm talking about is having that sort of general com compassion to see outside of yourself because a marriage is a union. A marriage is a team. Let's go back to football. You're not the only person on the field on your team, right? So having that awareness that somebody else matters besides you, that's all I'm saying. I don't think you can, a class can do that because to me, you can have a class, but to me, it's the person, it's the spouse that brings that out of you. I could go to a class and that kid show me these different um, tactics. They can show me these different exercises to learn and to love. But if I'm with somebody and I'm not feeling that person, all oh, that's going out the door. To me, it's more so about the connection. Right. And so that's that's what I'm saying. Like, OK, we can talk about this all night. But yeah, it's a, a good topic, people, man. No, no, it, it, it is. But I think if they had that, then they would know if that person is good for marriage. Right. Because at some point you're going to show yourself. I think a lot of people get married out of emotion. Right. Yeah. I, you, you like it. But we're talking about an act. A lot of people get married based off of pressure, too. They get married based off of pressure. Now, let's take it back to business. You and I can be friends, right? You and yeah. I can be the best friends in the world, but that doesn't mean you'll be a good business partner. True. And I would know that based on my training. That's why you get a lot of people who their first go around with business, they partner up with friends, family, business fails, right? Second time around, they recognize that. They recognize, okay, we're friends, but we probably wouldn't be good in business. And so I'm talking about being able to look at and be aware of certain qualities in an individual, as well as knowing yourself and say, okay, with this person, you know, I'm, I like, I like this person. Like, okay, you can have a chick who's great at being a great girlfriend, but she would be a terrible wife. But I think that's girl. where the, to me, and you kind of like, you, 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 you got the answer right there. To me, the dating process is the training process. To me. And, but where some people fail is they date, they don't date long enough. Think about it, right? And like I said, even though I said once you go from dating to marriage, things start over, but still, at least while you're dating, you learning some things out about that person. To me, you yeah, no, no, you're, 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 you know how they want to be loved. You know how they want to be treated. You know what they like. You know what rom type of romantic things they want you to do and vice versa. First, yeah. All right. Let me ask you this then. You haven't been married as long as you have and knowing as much as you do now. I'm going to ask you a question that you always ask our guests. If you could go back and talk to your younger self <laughs> Ooh. and tell him what you know now about marriage, what would you have have told young Willie? Oh, oh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> Going yeah, back, man. knowing what I know now, I'm gonna just tell myself what I would tell my sons. Oh, okay, okay, all right, go. Um, and what I would tell my sons is, if you're for sure deep down you want to get married, do it. But just know marriage is not a game like if you feel like you need to go travel if you feel like you need to go learn more about yourself because getting married at getting think about this right most people get married and they don't even know who they are fully so now you're getting married and not only you're learning who you are you have to learn who this person is too so I would tell myself, learn who you are first, date, learn what you like, learn what you don't like. But I don't think people realize that how hard it is to learn about yourself and learn someone else. So I would tell myself, same thing I would tell my sons, like learn about yourself, go travel, go, ex go experience different cultures, different things of the world, and then get married. 
Okay. Okay. I, so, because I never really thought about that though. Like, think about it. A lot of people get married, and you don't even know who you are yet. So now, once you yeah. get married, that's a bond. That's a commitment. Now you have to learn about that person while you're still trying to figure out who you are. Now, now you bring up a really interesting point. Do you think that you learn more about yourself by being with your wife? Over, you know what? Over time, I did, but it was a lot of bone. It was a lot of hard lessons in there too, right? So, by me learning myself, I made a lot of dumb man mistakes. I made a lot of uh, stupid mistakes. It was a lot of growing pain. Now, if you with that person that a go to do those growing pains, then you found you a good one. And I found a good one. My wife, she stuck with me through our growing pains. But I, I definitely think that uh, I definitely think I did learn a lot about myself by being with her. I learned a lot about myself. Yeah, so, I learned a lot. So, so for the audience, and here's why I'm asking these questions and we get ready to close out in a minute. Read this book to get the author's name but it's on Amazon, on Audible as well. 101 questions to ask before you get engaged. Mm. That's marriage training like a mud effort, right? Because it causes you to ask the questions. From what I can tell, a lot of us look at marriage only thinking about the good things, only thinking about the, the, the things when it's smooth and it's nice and it's, and it's fun, right? But what if really difficult situations pop up and here's what i talk about when it comes to training because these are the conversations that you that we should be having with each other just like you said you would tell your sons back in the day we used to have what's called elders and the elders would have conversations like this with the young men and give them the real right and this is what i'm talking about as far as training so i would say one thing i wish i'd learned and this is one of the biggest things where I think men and women clash and that's male and female nature. Mm -hmm. That is undeniable. And you're not going to change that. Yep. Absolutely. A lot of the questions that we ask, how come women do this? How come, you know, they do that and they ask the same things about us. Mm -hmm. The majority of what we do is really just our nature, right? If you understand a woman's nature, you'll be leap years ahead of all of it, and you'll know what to expect. Again, this is what goes into training. I promise you, they don't really teach you this in marriage counseling. <laughs> They're not teaching you about nature. And if you just have a basic understanding of human nature, then you will understand why we do a lot of the things that we do. I and think it that all matter. boils down to learning yourself, though. Because if you understand yourself, I think it'll make it easier for you to understand other people. Because think about if we understood what we meant when we got anxiety, why we're getting it, right? How we're, we wake up feeling some type of way. Think about if we understood that, okay, this happened. This is why I'm feeling this way. It's so much easier for me to relate. Like, dang, okay, Price, I see what he's going through. I understand what he's feeling because usually when I'm like, like to me, it all goes back down to, boils down to, learning yourself not like i say like same rules apply you'll learn different stuff about yourself we all uh, we all change over time well well no i i agree as it pertains to us as men <clears throat> but when you talk about learning female nature like and I, I i always use this example i don't care how many women you've been with you sleep next to a beautiful woman every night. You never know what it's like to be a woman, no. right? And vice vice versa. They'll, they'll never know what it's like to be us. But you can have a general understanding of their nature, right? So, like for example, women. A lot of guys don't realize this. Women go through puberty earlier than boys do, mm -hmm. right? Most girls are fully grown by the time they're fifteen or sixteen. We can keep growing until we're in our twenties, right? That's a that that's a completely different cycle that they go through versus what we go through. Women are hypergamous by nature, you know? So they always want to, if they get with a guy, and this is just their nature, no matter how much money they have, they want to marry up, right? That's, that's just their nature. That's why, you know, a lot of times a woman wants to be with a guy who's taller than she is woman's nature, right? 
basic things like that, especially when you're talking about bringing those two people together. And there's, and there's a lot of other things, but that basic training, which a lot of us don't get, you got to think our training consists of how many girls you just smash, right? We, we hear that from a very early yeah. age. Yeah. Right. So we like we really don't get runner. lectured about, right. We, we it's here in this country, it's really no con concrete goal to get married. It's expected for you to do that at some point, but there is no actual training. And so that's, that's what I'm saying. But just to, just to get back to our point, bro. And this is just my thinking on why we're choosing not to marry. So part of it, I think, because women can earn their own money. So again, women are hypergamous. So you got 10 dudes and all of them dudes earn what you earn or less. Probably not going to want to marry them dudes because to women, and I hate to say it, not just their beauty, but also their money nowadays is their bargaining chip. Whereas money which used is, to be our bargaining chip. Which is not, which to me is, I don't know, man. If, if, if your marriage is based off of how much money you got or like, cause Man, that's a bad recipe, man. You absolutely right. I mean, that's a horrible. Yeah, no, like, I look, I that, I, I agree. You know, I, I I thought it was supposed to be we a team. Exactly right. You know, you know, no how much. Like no matter what, I love that's, you, right? Like through heart, like man, yeah. Now, you know what? That's gonna be the so, last, so let's look, let's make that look. the next one right there, man. Yeah, I felt that one. Yeah, yeah, no, real, no, I, I got you. But it's like, look, you see how marriage is being approached, though. Yeah. It, it's not being approached with this. It's really you. being approached like a business, though. Think about it. But for yeah. marriage is a business, but it's being approached the negative way. Thinking like, like y'all supposed to come in together and work together. Hey, let's build an empire. Nobody wants to build an empire anymore. Nobody wants to. Hey, let's build this thing from the ground up. Let's build an empire. Let's start a legacy. Let's start, let's start something great. Everybody's coming in. Okay, if you can't match what I got, I can't do nothing with you. If you right. can't match what I got, I can't do nothing with you. And it's like, yo, that's not how it works, man. Yo, and look, that's that's why I asked you, like, didn't you learn more about yourself just by being with your wife? Because there's that, and you touched on it. There's that who I am now, and there's that who I'm going to become. Mm -hmm. And if you're only dating me for who I am now, or if you only want to marry me for who I am now, then you'll be disappointed because yep. I'm not staying this exact person that I am now. So, but yeah, I mean, lots of points to be made. We definitely going to have to brother. do a part two. For sure. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, why aren't we choosing to marry in 2021? Hell, a lot of people aren't, aren't even dating like that in in, nope. in 2021 and that's something that as a as a culture that if we're going to move forward if we're going to actually grow we got to take the attention off of just me and it's got to be about we mm, i like that that's my take <laughs> all right man yeah, bro go I ahead close this out there man listen close first off we got to start doing this we are not doing this man shout out to our um our preaching our preaching on patreon of supporters man shout out to our subscribers shout out to did i say did i say it right i think i said it right shout out to our subscribers yes, yes. shout out to everyone that has supported the channel um listen man keep supporting us keep liking um keep sharing our videos we are the black culture podcast follow us on facebook instagram and twitter at the black culture podcast you can follow me on instagram at the willie ashford you can follow my man price on price on ig price on tiktok X price on Facebook, man. And uh, you got anything else, dog? Yeah, and follow Willie on TikTok. His, his TikTok is uh, the going Willie up Ashford. At I'm actually the... live on TikTok right now, man. We got some good feedback. Oh, nice, nice, bro. Nice. So yeah, y'all. Uh, look, and if y'all want us to keep making these videos for y'all, let us know. If it's a certain topic you want us to talk about, go ahead and drop that down. And uh, until then. It's the Black Culture Podcast. Peace. Peace. Appreciate y'all. Hey, I appreciate the love, y'all. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Black Culture Podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to our channel. 
on YouTube, Apple, Google, and Spotify. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Black Culture Podcast. Peace. Peace.